Hello and welcome to Ready Waves by Todibert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then please subscribe and tap or smash that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Alright, today in front of us we have three radios. They're all FM stereo, yeah! They're all different styles and we're just going to have a little fun with this video because tonight is a stormy night and it's difficult for me to do any kind of audible AM and shortwave band scans because of lightning strikes. So, I still want to make a video, and I thought I'd feature three of my little favorite radios that use headphones. Um, lately, I've been on the hunt for a great FM stereo radio and nice AM reception. And so I found three that I really like, and I kind of just want to go over them. A lot of you guys might recognize these. They're pretty common, and you can pick them up fairly cheap. Most of these are under $20 if you shop and take your time, uh, and we'll go through them. So the first radio, let's put these two aside, we'll look at is the Sony. This is the SRF-59 and it's probably the most prolific radio out there that you guys probably know about already. There's probably a million reviews on it, so I'm not really going to review it. I'm just going to give you my opinion. Um, I love it. <laughs> the reason why I like it is it's really small. And I first got it, I plugged in headphones, and the stereo sounded wonderful. Uh, the reception was decent. It even has a DX... Um, Local switch here for the FM makes a huge difference. You know, I bought this radio for the AM too because somebody, you know, said, I don't know who it was, but somebody said the SR59 is similar to that uh, 39 model. That's supposed to be really good on the AM band. It's fairly decent. It's not great, but it's fairly decent. I say fairly decent because I think it needs to be tuned. Um, and I read somebody else had posted on a forum or, or one of the radio forums that. You got to go in there. You may have to tune up something. I don't know if there's a, a I have transformer in there, but he also said he had to move his antenna, cut the wax. And he had to slide the antenna to get a better tune and get better uh, sensitivity on the AM. And I, I think I'm going to have to do that too because my dial doesn't quite line up and uh, my sensitivity doesn't seem as strong as some of those other two radios, which I'm going to show you. But otherwise, I really like this radio. A big reason is this is really cool is it takes one AA battery. Yep. I really like this. Um, wow, was all I can say. That is really neat in a pinch. You know, if you need some kind of radio source and you only have one battery, you got it made. I mean, this is just a really cool go-to radio for that respect. And, you know, I know it doesn't have a speaker, but uh, at night I've been using headphones and uh, it's really neat to listen to the AM band on headphones. You know, and this radio does it very well, too. Uh, the volume control is really nice. So, just a great overall radio. And I left the bell clip on too, guys. <laughs> you know me and my bell clips. But uh, yeah, so that's a Sony SRF59 nutshell. There's the 49 model, I believe, and the 39. I think they're all fairly equals. Um, if you're looking for a good AM, they say DX performer. I would say, yeah, probably. Like I said, mine needs some tuning, I'm guessing, from what I've read. Uh, but my little Nia radio, my white radio, you guys all know about the Nia RD206. Um, that little one that does outperform this radio, so I will tell you that it does, and uh, but that's okay because this thing sounds fantastic on FM stereo also. So it's just a little bit of work, I could probably have this thing like rocking. So excited about this radio. This one I think cost me about twenty bucks. Not in bad shape. Usually I see them; they're pretty beat up. So I got it pretty good. I know some people find these for five dollars, ten dollars on thrift stores and shopping around. Um, so it's definitely worth under twenty bucks in this condition. Um, for a speakerless uh, unit. So definitely a go-to buy. I'm a Sony fanboy too, by the way. <laughs> so let's go to this one here, the GE. This is the 1600B model. And I'm going to look up the, the stats. I'll put it down here when it was uh, produced. I believe it was made for quite a while. Very popular model. Um, very easy to find. Very inexpensive. I was surprised. I think I got this unit for about 15 bucks, maybe, maybe even less. I think twelve dollars and it was really good shape too i was really happy with that and this blew me away this am reception is whoa it's like off the charts it's it's better than the other two radios it's, it's like the king on am right now um i love it uh the fm stereo is really good um i can even turn it on you can tell i love this radio um so he has a switch in the front for the am fm band select it's got really cool independent controls for left and right ear i really like that because sometimes well some people have hearing issues i have one where my left ear isn't as sensitive as my right ear and i have to adjust that and that's good i'm glad they have that because then the stereo comes nicer you can hear that stereo and really appreciate it so what a good idea to be able to control the volume independently for ear to ear very nice 
glad they have that. Um, kind of like a balance, you know, like on that uh, realistic uh, radio that I reviewed. So, yeah, uh, I like this General Electric. It's a little bit bigger um, comparing the two. Yeah, much bigger. Um, and then, you know, Iron Man here, give you an idea for size comparison. And I'll bring them back out, you know, here's CC Pocket. Um, so you get an idea of the size. This is not as pocket friendly, of course, as this is. This is very portable, very, very pocket friendly. But the, the GE, this really just hits it out of the park for reception. I, I really love it. Um, it really rocks. It just overall is amazing for its age, too. And in here, I think it takes three three AAA batteries. Kind of annoying that it takes three AAA batteries. Uh, you know, it's an odd number. Everything they sell these things in even numbers. So, yeah, not always fun. Oh, it's going to be a fight to get this closed. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but neat redesign. You know, GE is known for this. I really like this. Um, grab onto this radio. You know you got this radio uh, in your pocket. You can handle it pretty easily. Everything's pretty recessed, too, like this volume control, or uh, excuse me, tuning control wheel. You know, the wheel here is really recessed on the side. Um, and then the volume is just under the top of the radio, too. So it's pretty hard to hit those. You need to really try to bump those volume controls. So you're not likely to do that. And of course you got your AM band select. I just, a really, really good radio. Um, like I said, they're pretty common. You're gonna be able to find these pretty easily. Uh, like I said, I got a, somebody told me about this radio after I did the review for the GE 2001 uh, Slimline. I guess they, they have similar electronics inside. And yeah, this is a great AM, D, I don't know, call it DXer, but really good on the AM at nighttime. Um, I was just picking up stations like my big, big radios. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a speakerless, headphone only uh, radio vintage, something different, this is the way to go. I really like it. So that is the GE 1600B. Awesome. And then this radio, I I just like the way it looked. I didn't know much about this one. This is the Panasonic RF-11. And I saw it on eBay and you know, it looked cool because it had these uh, three preset equalizers. So it has high and low boost. Press that, it kicks it in. You got middle boost, I like that, and you got normal. I use it on normal most of the time, um, but I, th I thought that was pretty neat. And of course, it's a stereo, I'm like, oh, I gotta have it. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. I got the radio, it didn't work, uh, because I opened up the battery compartment, and there was a lot of cor corrosion on the inside. This particular radio uses two AAA batteries. So we open this up, you can see the two batteries in here, and you use this little strap to get them out. Pretty cool how it's on the side like this. But that was unique, you know, different. And this radio, the reason why I bought it too was it was made in Japan. I don't believe these others were. I think this is Hong Kong. Um, what's this look? Hong Kong. And of course, I bet you this Sony is China. Let's see. Do they put? Did they put that on there? Yep, made in China, right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I just saw made in Japan. I'm like, ooh, Japan quality. But it didn't work. So this one took a lot of effort. And I, I was gonna just return it because it's like really bad shape and that. All the controls were messed up. They weren't working right when I would get it working. So I just, I just told the seller, you know what, I want to return it. They said, I ah, keep it. So I got it for free. Uh, it's always good to check with the seller and see if they're interested in having it back or maybe discount it for you. In this case, they said keep it. So I took it all apart to spend probably a good few hours cleaning it. Um, and it's fairly easy to work on too. I was surprised when I got it all apart. Very easy to open, very easy to get to everything. Again, the Japanese way. I think they thought about service technicians when they built these radios. Just amazing and easily to uh, recover most of its uh, capability. The only problem I have once in a while is getting FM stereo to come in. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a problem with the headphone jack or with the switch. I've played and cleaned and done different things, but uh, you know, it's it's okay. I can listen to FM mono. It doesn't bother me too much, but once in a while the stereo will kick in. <laughs> Um, it's not an antenna thing, even my strongest stations um, sometimes won't come in FM stereo, so I have to play with it a little bit. Sometimes it's a headphone jack, I think, or it's this power switch. So, But pretty cool dial on top. I really like this. How it tunes. It, uh, whoops, over here. It's got a really cool little tiny tuner on top there. It's kind of neat, so you get this like nice solid color steam going there. I kind of like that. On the side here is your uh, band select, FM stereo, FM AM, on off switch. The little switches are recessed, so it's pretty easy to uh, not, I mean, sorry, not easy to bump them. It's just the band switch sticks up a little higher than the other. So not, yeah, I like the good thought out design. Another belt clip, I left it on. It's it's not too bad. It's kind of shallow there, so not a big deal to me. Um, these radios are going to have them. 
Uh, just, yeah, this, this radio here impresses me on the overall look and the way these equalizers work. Sometimes I really do like listening to this high and low boost. Uh, it really changes the tone up. A middle boost sometimes really is nice to listen to. So yeah, sometimes I'll switch depending on the song playing. Um, these really, I just really like having this this preset equalizer. Just click the little switches, and it rocks. <laughs> Volume control here is real nice. Like I said, everything's recessed really good, well thought out. Um, FM stereo light. You can see the uh, it's AFC FM. So I'm guessing this one here is an earlier one too, maybe an 80s model. I'll put the date there if I find it down below. So yeah, another another great radio. This takes two, two AA batteries. I don't know if I mentioned that. Another great radio without, you know, a speaker that you can look for for under 20 bucks. That if you can find this one for under 20 bucks, I'd definitely get it uh, because it's so easy to work on. Um, and it's really neat to play with these uh, equalizer settings. You really like that. Uh, like I said, and then just interesting placement and Japan quality. So, yeah, and that gives you an idea of the size. There's an Iron Man, give you an idea. We got a CC Pocket there. Cool. So this is pretty, just a fun little video I thought I'd make, showcasing some of the radios. I've, I have, I'm not gonna really do an independent review for each of these because I'll be honest with you, I haven't found a good amplifier to amplify the AM signal without interfering with the signal. So I need to find something that works. Even my FM transmitter too, uh, puts a little uh, line, what do you call it, line noise on it. So I gotta figure out a way to get a good amplified speaker. Even my Sony, that little uh, you know stereo Sony that I reviewed that has auxiliary in, I tried using that radio. And they all had they all produce noise on the AM, so um, it's hard to showcase the radio on the AM band, which I like to do mainly. And FM's FM, everybody knows the FM's gonna work good, but to showcase the AM, it's just, it's really nice to be able to get a speaker to do that. And so since I don't have a speaker, I just kind of go, you know, you have to just kind of trust my opinion on the radios. But there you go, a little bit of size comparison there. I think the coolest out of all of them is the Panasonic. I mean, the black looks cool. The color scheme looks awesome. Uh, if I had to pick one, it would be this one. It's just, it's pretty neat. I mean, I love it. I love the little dial on top. It just, it's a sign of good quality, good quality build. I'm pretty happy. I mean, all these have a solid build to them. This feels like a tank right here. I mean, yeah, you know you're holding this when you got this thing. And this this doesn't feel too bad. This feels like it could take a beating and keep on going too. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with all, all these purchases. Um, so I, hopefully you get a little bit of information there uh, about these radios. All good buy, under 20 bucks. Uh, solid radios I know they're used and you take a little risk on used radios but if you buy them and you get a little bit of it seller or sorry buyer protection that's a good thing that way uh, if you have an issue with the radio you can say hey this thing isn't working right you know you'd say take it back and they have to so um, and I'm not afraid to do that anymore because it's like you spend the money and you just you want to have a good working radio so there you are the Sony SRF-59 gets a thumbs up the Panasonic our F11 definitely gets the thumbs up. Probably two thumbs up for that one. I love it's un the unique equalizer. Awesome. And, you know, last but not least, the GE with its dual volume headset control. That is just, I really dig this. I think this is just, that is a really neat feature for someone like me that, like I said, has a hearing issue in one ear where I can't hear as good out of that ear as I do the other. I can just tune, tune the volume to where it sounds perfect, and, you know, like a balance. Um, it just works out really well. I'm glad they had that. So which one do I listen to the most out of all three radios? This one, <laughs> probably because of this. Um, and I don't, you know, do a lot of traveling or, or, or running or anything like that. So this works out pretty good. But if I, if I was a runner or if I was traveling more, I'd probably pick the smaller Sony for everyday use. And then this here, just to kind of, kind of like a cool go-to radio, like in between, you know, doing, I'm not doing this, not doing that. This is gonna like to show off radio, you know, <laughs> It is pretty classy. I mean, wow. <laughs> so I'm just rambling now. So I have filler material. Just, just rambling along here. Um, so yeah, great little radios. Hopefully it helps you if you see these and you're wondering, I wonder how good they are. All three are equal, just pretty good equals. It, again, we'll just go over them real quick. FM stereo, FM stereo, FM stereo. They all sound really good on FM stereo. They all get decent reception FM stereo. Um, so you're not going to go wrong there. AM, AM uh, performance, the best AM performer is here. Second is Sony, third is Panasonic. I didn't mention that, this AM on here is okay. It's not as good as these two. So I was surprised, I'm like, oh man, this should be way better. <laughs> but the, this one rocked, this one came in second and this one came in third. And this one may come in first if I do that tuning to it. So yeah, there you go. 
So if you liked the video, big thumbs up. I hope you did. I know it's a short video. I usually like doing uh, longer ones, like 30 minute ones. <laughs> but tonight, like I said, it's a stormy night. I just can't play any radios without static. And I figured this would be a neat little introduction to speakerless radios. A little fun with it. You get to see a couple of different styles, which I, I really dig. <laughs> they are fun. So, all right, guys, big thumbs up if you liked the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe if you're new, if you love this type of stuff. I, I try to produce a video evening, and I have fun doing this. And if you guys have fun watching them, yeah, be part of it. Hit the little bell icon, smash it like Hulk smash. <laughs> and get notified of my videos every night so you don't miss out. I don't want you guys to miss out because I have some really cool stuff. And I do have more videos coming, so I have more material, don't worry. I'm going to have some that are really going to be like, yeah, you got that radio, cool. So I got some cool ones on the way, <laughs> so don't worry. Uh, you know, hey, We're going to have fun with that. And then comment below, which is your favorite? Do you own all three of these? Do you own that one? Do you own that one? Do you own that one? Uh, give me some stories. You know, do you you know how long have you had that? Or did you have this back in the day and loved it? Do you have this one still and you love it? You're like, whoa, what's this one? That's awesome. Yeah, you know, just just let me know. I'd like to hear about it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.